to get to this point, but now I need you to help me as being my army going into the stores and don't let the people with nipple, excuse me, people with nose rings, ear rings, head rings, and uh, appendix rings uh, bury the book. But did you did you get a copy or not? I I did get a copy and I'm going to give it to uh, my friends. There were uh, and also I noticed there were only six copies on the table. I asked where all the other co uh, copies. They said that's all they had the stores. Like you're kidding me. You're, you're kidding me. And so, I mean, like, well, you know it's gonna you know they're going to be cleaned out in the first hour in Virginia for God's sakes. This is all. I ha I happen to know. I I've got pictures. There's a rush on the book. Uh, by women in burkas, I hear, are buying them in droves. No. I mean, we know that they're the ones who want to read the American way, for sure. They can't wait to see what Government Zero is about. So it's the, it's those dressed in the 15th century costume uh, of the Middle East that will be flocking to the bookstores in the Washington area to read the book. Because as you well know, they're very well versed in America, American history, American culture, and they love our borders, language, and culture. Dr. Savage, I live in Arlington, Virginia, which we commonly call the People's Republic of Arlington because it's all composed of, uh, if they're not, um, you know, immigrants from um, third world countries, they're all white liberals who, uh, you know, they, they, they love minorities. They just want to send their kids to uh, private schools as far away from them. Well, that's right. You know how that works. They love minorities, but ask them the last time they had a minority to dinner. Are you kidding? I live in a, I live in a neighborhood full of them. They're... Uh, they're the biggest hypocrites on the planet. There's well, remember, most of them are make, making big money by being big liberals. There's huge, huge fortunes being made on feeding, housing, clothing, educating, med medicating immigrants. There's a big industry. We know that in Europe, the mafia is running the immigrants in from the Middle East. The gangsters are. And in America, it's the liberal government itself making a fortune in grants and contracts. So don't think they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. This song is dedicated to all of the new immigrants to America. They don't even know what it means. They don't even know what the word Oki means. Those were white people who uh, worked the soil during the Great Depression, the Okies. There was no welfare, you see, no medication, no education, no lawyers from the ACLU suing God himself for bringing on a drought. That's who Anoki was. And there was no one there to help him. So he had to work 15, 18 hours a day, seven days a week picking uh, grapes in California. And many people listening to this show are descendants of those Okies. And um, they're not any worse for it. See, hard work never killed anybody. Being a lazy bum who comes here and lives off the fat of the land is what kills you. First it kills your spirit, then it kills your soul. And then you wind up hating the nation that's feeding you because you realize the nation is stupid enough to feed you for doing nothing. And so you have contempt for the people around you thinking that they are the ones who are stupid. What you don't realize is the people know who you are. The people despise you and your, par your parasitic behavior. And it's not the people who are feeding you for doing nothing. It's the corrupt government feeding you because they want you to vote for them. And that's exactly how a nation collapses, through invasion. And it collapses first not from the invasion itself, but from the enemy, enemy within. I've reminded people on this show for years that the Native Americans, better known as Indians, were sold out by their own tribal leaders. They sold out for, I don't know, wampum, which was some kind of money, guns and, and liquor. And for doing that, they sold out their own tribesmen, tribeswomen. They sold out their own people, in other words. Same thing as what we have now going on in our government. Very similar, and it's catastrophically sad. And so what we're trying to do on shows like this and others is alert you to the fact that there is an America, a real America. There's a hardcore America. You just don't see it. Because in addition to the fact that we have louts running the government, we have the most anti-American sickos running the image machines in Hollywood, as witnessed by this director of the most filthy movies the world has ever seen. Violence, filth, pornography, Quentin Tarantino, who goes to New York yesterday, the same day they're burying a black policeman in New York who was shot by a black thug who he was pursuing on foot. And this low-life, deranged director comes to town and placates the street thugs in Black Lives Matter simply to promote a movie that will be coming out. 
The only one missing from that display of hatred for the police was Harvey Weinstein, who should have been on a float with him, spewing anti-gun, anti-police rhetoric. That's what we have to say on the Savage Nation every day. I hope you enjoy it, because you know the truth hurts. The truth may hurt, but the truth, it is said, shall set us free. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Did you hear that song yesterday? Many people were stirred by this battle hymn of the Republic. Robert, can you find that one for us? Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. If you remember the words of that song, it's an old one. And it has the word truth in it. When have you last heard the word truth spoken by anyone in politics? Have you heard one candidate say one word about the word truth itself? Has Hillary Clinton mentioned the word truth in any of her monologues against America and American America's founding principles? I haven't heard the word truth come out of her mouth, have you? Anyway, you get the picture. But I want to play that song the minute we find it. You can just play it at any time. That's the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Okay, I got it. Go ahead. Vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Truth is marching on. That's a line that would get a, a laugh out of Woody Allen, Larry David, smoking a doobie somewhere in a Manhattan apartment or restaurant while listening to me, saying, we heard this guy is funny. I turn it off. We heard this guy Savage is funny. He does the better, best imitations ever of Bernie Sanders. I tried to top him on Saturday Night Live, but I couldn't do it, even though I had a stage set, coaching, lights, action, camera. He has nothing. The guy is pretty good. Let's listen to that crackpot and see what he has to say today. See, when they hear something like that, the truth, his truth is marching on, a commie like them, communists like them, America haters like them, it's endemic in them, it's in their DNA. They hate the country. And you ask yourself, how could a man who made a billion dollars doing funny shows hate the country? The answer is simple. Liberalism is a mental disorder. If you grow up around a table in Brooklyn, for example, in the 1950s or 40s, whenever they were boys, if you could imagine them as boys. They had commie parents who hated the country generally, uh, not too far away from being an immigrant themselves. And instead of embracing and loving America, these were a certain breed of haters. They were communists through and through. They sent their children to communist camps in the Poconos, where the children were indoctrinated in America hatred. See if this is true or false. So you have the red diaper baby, who was sent to camp such as that, a well-documented fact. And then you added the 60s with the uh, infliction of tetrahydrocannabinol on these sick minds. And then you have the advent or the birth of the red diaper doper baby, the RDDB. The RDDB now runs the country from Hollywood to Washington to Sacramento, the sickest generation in American history, mentally sick, physically polluted, no souls, spirits that are dead. Look at the state of California. Take a look at the progressive government of California. It's not just a one-party system. It may as well be a non-party system. It may as well just be an autocracy run by Jerry Brown and his minions. They have a, a boondoggle called a, I don't know, a high-speed rail. We all know it was a phony uh, contracts for friends to make billions and billions of dollars over a 10 or 20 year period. Guess what just came out today? This rail line that Jerry Brown pushed through the state is not going to be finished on time. And it's not going to cost what they said it would cost. And guess who's going to pay for it? We will. It's a crime. It's a crime that uh, was noted in the series True Detective uh, this last year. It was all about the corruption of this railway line in California. Even Hollywood knows how corrupt this government is. And you say, well, if we all know it, why doesn't the FBI do something about these no-bid contracts? Why doesn't the FBI raid the offices in, in the state of California, the Transportation Department, and raid the offices and find the inside deals, get the emails? Well, my friends, we don't have an FBI that's independent. No, my friends, the days are long over that we have a separation of powers. Under Barry from Honolulu, there is only one power, and that is him. He is the ultimate master of uh, this nation. And that's the way the liberals like it, because they themselves run their studios like little dictators. And so they figure if you run a country, you may as well run it like a studio. Just be a good tyrant. 
and you'll get everything you want as quickly as possible. I see that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is giving speeches in broken Chinese in China in order to peddle Facebook to this very lucrative but untapped market in China. My salutes to you, Mark Zuckerberg, for speaking broken Chinese in China. I could just imagine what this would have done to the men who died at the Chosin Reservoir if they were still alive, Marky. But you see, for boys like you, there's, number one, no nation, and number two, there's no amount of money on earth that, that could ever fill your sick, empty soul. I got that out of my system pretty good. It's only 42 minutes after the hour and uh, was sailing along. I guess you thought I'd read from the book today. I haven't done that yet. I'm not ready for it. I think reading from books on the air is a little hard. I think it doesn't translate as well as talking from the, the heart. So I'll stick to talking to the heart. You want to call about the book, where you found it, where it was, what this will do that. I want to hear about it. I want to note something, though, and I guess it's a little touchy. I don't know if he's going to want me to do this or not. Are you ready? Please listen. Guess whose birthday today is? And I don't know if he's listening, but he's the most important newsman since uh, Randolph Hearst. That's right. His name is Matt Drudge, and today is his birthday. And I got to say, happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, things are good. People are good. Business is great. How did that go, the 1970s bumper stickers? Doesn't it? Don't you wish we could turn the clock back to the innocent 70s? You know, sometimes I watch movies on television. I watch movies a lot on television. And I particularly like movies from the 1970s when almost all the cars were American cars. Remember those movies like uh, French Connection? You rarely saw any so-called foreign cars 1970 71 big american cars they didn't handle very well they turned corners you know that kind of early godfather movies big american cars cadillac chevys buicks chrysler's remember those those movies and then something happened in the 70s i was living in honolulu very briefly at that time and i noticed it happening there when the japanese were bringing in loads of tourists from Japan, of course, very welcome in Hawaii. They pumped a lot of money into the economy. But I noticed something odd. They were uh, putting them on Japanese tour buses in Honolulu with only Japanese uh, notices on the buses. The tour buses were being shipped in from Japan by ship. They wouldn't even give a dime of the business to local tour companies. And I said, that doesn't seem fair to me. How could you let Japanese companies come to Hawaii and use tour buses from Japan and not use American tour bus companies. And I just shrugged and walked away from it. Well, as the time went on, of course, the movies changed. and There was hardly an American car to be seen on the streets of the films as the 80s evolved. And in the 90s, they disappeared almost altogether. And the ships that I see traversing the waters of San Francisco Bay, they come in laden to the waterline with Japanese cars and Korean cars. The ships are down, down, down in the water with all the new cars that they produce in Korea and Japan. And then I watch the ships go back to Korea and Japan out of San Francisco Bay. I watch them very carefully. And the ships are riding 30 feet up above the waterline. Why are they riding so high? Why are they riding so high? Because you know what we're shipping back to them? Nothing. The Koreans buy nothing from us. The Japanese buy nothing from us. They dump their cars on our shores without tariffs. They buy nothing from us. That's how stupid this country is. Or shall I say that's how corrupt this country is. Take your choice because at the end it doesn't really matter. Now that little observation about the ships, I have to correct slightly because I understood the ships needed some ballast to go back across the Pacific Ocean or else they would have probably, uh, let's say, floundered in a rough sea. And so America did send things back to Japan and has uh, found things to put on those ships. You know what those things are? Scrap metal to China. I uh, used to boat down the estuary in Oakland, and there was a, a factory that ground up old metal, American metal, ground it up, broke it up, ground it up, broke it up, and through a conveyor belt, pumped it into the holds of ships. See, they're very clever in China. They're buying our old steel, our old scrap metal. Now, there's a saying from the Spanish philosopher that fits right now entitled, it goes like this, those who do not know their history are condemned to repeat it. Now, you see, in the 1930s, the Japanese also bought our scrap metal. 
and the capitalists were so happy to send the scrap metal to Japan.